the glaives for the lane just to try and harass out these two melee heroes as much as possible provided that his positioning is decent enough uh i'm also just considering like what the lycan and spirit breaker is going to do eventually once the the lanes start to dissolve obviously it's important for them to look to play around taking this early tower up top wow. for beast coast but once you can use the wolves as just scouting tools for enabling the charge i think that could really be a what enables Beast Coast to find some pickoffs to lead into, you know, a few of these key objectives here. Yeah, that's actually that's a really good point. Uh, Beast Coast do have this big advantage in regards to vision. It's like to be able to deal with wolves that's constantly scouting you out, lanes that's shoved out because of the idle, and so that's really gonna make it that much easier to, to potentially bring down Poppy on the silencer or, or, or catch out Nisha out of position on on the sniper. Yeah. Thirty seconds. Oh, yeah, I mean, does that mean that he needs to go, like, the earliest imaginable Shadow Blade? Just so that you're, you know, not completely revealed by Vision. You need to really purchase a lot more sentries, which means that your timings are slower. It's kind of a repeat of game number one, right? But the difference this time around for Beast Coast is that if you're opting to go into Sniper, Leshrac, Slada, and you're wanting to farm heavily, you will get pushed by a Shadow Fiend, Enigma, and a, uh, a Lycan Draft. And, you know, you know that a Spirit Breaker wants to be going forward as well. You know that a Slark wants to be fighting too. So I think this draft makes a lot more sense for Beast Coast in terms of their style of play, as well as specifically against what Secret have picked up. You, you think they're going to be able to push the tempo for Beast Coast? I feel like it's a bit more like a, a greedier liner, like three true cores. Well, Lycan doesn't need much, right? And like Helmet Enigma, Overlord, right? Yeah, but Enigma, all he needs is Eidolons, right? So you just want level 7, essentially, on Stinger, and you're fine. SB's going to be charging around the map. Basically, the only one spending a little bit more time farming is c -Smart. Maybe he'll go into the Boots of Travel to enable that. You know, instant pickoffs onto wherever you want. Maybe just bots onto the... Can you still bots onto the Wolves? I imagine you can. Yeah, yeah. You can still bots into the Wolves. Unless something has changed, then I know you should still be able to. So we'll see how the lane's going to be set up for the moment. Again, less track combined with the Earth Spirit. Do we feel like there's going to be a different outcome with this lane pairing that they're going up against the Slark and the Spirit Breaker this time? Uh, I mean, it is still two melee heroes, right? So I feel like Resolution is going to be in a fine enough spot. Do they go for the kill temps once they reach up onto level two? Who knows? But I really don't feel like Kajira is going to provide all that much in this lane, to be honest. Nothing to slander the player. It's more just the hero combination. Take a look at how the, the other list side lane is shaping up for the moment, and I think Chrysalis is going to be very happy into this, and you see Whispers even forced to go to a very early use of the Ring of Protection, just to kind of help out with some of the right-click damage that will come out very shortly from the slaughter once he's able to get more points in the bash. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, for sure. I mean, Stinger might even be able to get away with being a little bit more farm-oriented too. You're not going to be able to do too much trading happening here just with your right-clicks. To be fair, though, the, the wolves, they give a decent amount of XP if they go down, and like I was expecting, you know, it's not against two melee heroes, but... This uh, Glaives of Wisdom is doing an incredible amount of work from Puppy so far. Might even get this first blood. Oof. Mid lane, Nisha's oh. trying to man mode against C Smart with another use of the Shrapnel and Dive in the Tower. Nisha will get some revenge for how the last game shaped up in the laning phase. Oh, the charge coming through though. Gajira going all the way. He's hoping that maybe he slows down even a little bit so that he doesn't connect onto Nisha before the water rune, but no, he's going to have to stop. Get the water rune. Don't let Nisha get... <laughs> he, wanted, he wanted experience for himself. Well, Nisha's pretty much back up to four now. And with a kill and level advantage over C-Smile. He had his bottle available as well as they make the charge down onto bottom. But K1, not really in a position to be able to make a gank oh, attempt, connected. actually ends up pouncing into it. Oh, wow. Sorry, I swore. <laughs> Rezo gives him the next level play. Well. Oh, my. It's like Space Invaders, you know? You don't shoot where they are, you shoot where they're going to be. Okay. Zayat, he's played a lot of Space Invaders. That, that's why he's, uh, he's so good on the Earth Spirit, predicts their movements. 
the most popular game in Kyrgyzstan for sure. <laughs> He's the he's the number one space invader player. I didn't have you seen the uh, the history books? Yeah, right, he's, he's ahead of me on the leaderboards. I'm very salty about it. Oh, in in, in Kyrgyzstan, I, I didn't know you uh no, played on the leaderboards. Oh, oh, global leaderboards. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, you're gonna have to pick up your space invader game. I don't know. I'm quite disappointed as a boomer like you. I thought you'd uh. Bro, I'm not a, a TI pro player. Though. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm decent at games. Not that good though. Yeah, but hang on, hang on. Space Invaders compared to, to Dodo is uh, some different things here. It's true. One is much more skilled. Uh, <laughs> all right, Which so one? <laughs> as we get back to the game, we got uh, Nisha again having a really solid time. Dude, Wisdom lately. might die, Tom. Chrysalis is going to continue the dive. We're stinging nearby. Just a, a chuck out of the Malefus will not be a deterrent at all. So Chrysalis gets an easy kill and also TP's out. a little rough again all three lanes now this time around going in secrets favor despite the fact that they've got this this avenue to be able to you know again just sit back and farm if you've got this good start to the game then you're not as worried about the the death ball that's eventually going to be coming because you've got the experience advantage you might have your ultimates a little bit earlier it lanes he smile oh. oh the charging's going to be on the mark He's going to try and turn it back around with the razors, but will not be able to get close enough. And now Gojira, he's stuck inside the shrapnel. They will not have another charge to play with. They're going to be relying on some headshot procs to try and get the kill. Not be he lucky his, enough. Uh, he had his boots delivered mid-fight there. Maybe if he had them just a little bit before, he would have been able to save See Smile as they go for actually the kill here onto Gojira. Looks like they were able to claim it as well. Nisha picking up oh. his second kill of the game and his third involvement. This is not a good start. On a pretty goddamn good sniper game. With also multiple ways to be able to buff him up and heroes to play in front of the sniper. This is some scary territories to start this game one. Game two, I should say, in top lane. Singer again. Another band boy getting chased under the towel. They will have Gojira to be able to move up top shortly to try and provide some assistance. I wonder if he gets this sense that the charge is coming. They don't have any vision inside of the lane and he's actually going to go through the trees, but be underneath the tower and back off in time. I was about to say back off in time, but at least they forced the crush out of him. Oh no, they had a bash Who's already ready what? and primed. Oh, it looks like secret of the one that will happen with Beast Coast forcing. This bottom lane, K1 almost goes down as well. Resolution more than happy of playing this 1v1 versus the Slark. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's just zero kill Do threats. It. Well, All zero right. kill threat from the Slark onto the Leshrac, I mean, but... Rezo, he feels like he could kill at any stage. This is a tricky position to be in. Slark's gonna Midas queued up. You see Smile lands a triple raise, but Zayats is just able to roll away. He's gonna try and catch up. They do have the vision for the charge. Should be able to find the kill. Rezo, help me out, friend. Silence is it. Zayats no. kicks the way, but it will not be enough. At least they will get the return kill on to see Smile. So job well done for Zayats. Come on, give this man a tip. I know Rezo's already used all of them. You gotta, you gotta ration those tips. You know they're really valuable. Uh, but if it was anyone else other than K1 buying the Midas, I would feel a lot more worried. But he's found time to be able to make it work. You know that's why he was towards the the peak of carry players for. Well, it felt like a couple of months. You know around that time where Beast Coast in their previous form were just bursting onto the scene. He changed how carries played the game with his farming patterns, with his item builds that were very unorthodox. The only... Oh. See, Smile, you're getting, getting dive once again onto the tower. This is what a Shadow Fiend hates to be up against early on. Heroes that can close the distance with ease. And now Gojira will pay the price as well with Assassinate securing five kills for Nisha early on and make a kill streak for the Sniper. And meanwhile, Crystal's Another dive! 1v2! Oh 1v2 my lord. Underneath the tower, with Eidolons, with Wolves, he does not give a damn. Why didn't you say the other word? Though. It's PG stream, brother. Alright, uh -huh. they get the charge through on uh, Gojira, all the way from base. We have the uh, summon Wolves for another 10 or so seconds though, so Crystalis realizing that he's played against plenty of Spirit Breakers in his time, and he's all the way back to base. When do you reckon he stops the charge? Okay. Uh, now. Uh, <laughs> he places the ward up as well, just to provide a little bit of that extra vision. Also slightly further out of range from the cliff ward, too. 
Oh, look at that. My look at the the idol on kills. Oh, see. Top All that money. Loads of money. Loads on Mula. Much better start for Secret in this game in particular than what we saw in game one. Of course, it was still a game where they were able to somehow stabilize and come back. And well, Beast Coast, they're the ones that are going to need to try and find an angle back into this game. And it is not going to be easy for the heroes that they have. They do not play well behind. They do not play from behind well at all, I should say. Well, they got level six on K1, so he's going to use that to be able to rotate back towards the jungle. Bottom lane completely open. There's no one in, on the team that can defend this. And, well, they're actually even going to give up a kill on top of everything else. Get a D ward through. This this feels like a disaster for Beast Coast right now. It, they must feel like no matter where we go, we're just going to get picked off. And you really don't want to use this shapeshift to try and run away. But it almost feels like it's going to get to that stage. K1, rotation up top. They want to try and find a quick pick off here. But it's right underneath the tower. So plenty of potential for TP rotations to come. Full mana on Rezo if he needs to come. Yeah. And Chris has might be in a position where he could just stand under the tower and, and actually be able to man fight against this. Probably will need some extra forces. But you see what they're getting out across the map. Bottom tower is getting shoved in. Mid tower is getting shoved in as well. So Secret definitely winning out on the trade with multiple heroes from Beast Crows playing up top. And well, we're going to see the shapeshift usage. Poppy's going to instantly TP out before the Centaur stun. And meanwhile, with the river, Gojira, he's also going to go down as well. So try to face check Znisha and Zaya to prevent them from continuing to put pressure onto the tower. And well, that's going to cost him his life. Is also stinging down bottom. Puppy and Resolution in combination together is going to be able to get another kill and more intel for the Puppy Meister. At least they traded something, you know? K1, he's got this area up top to play with now. He's got the Dark Pact. He can sit himself inside the jungle. But you just got to keep in mind on where is uh, Crystalis and where is Zayat. If you know that at all times, then you can feel a lot Mid -lane more comfortable. Oh no. Oh no, they thought they left. They thought Secret left the area. Not the case. Baiting the lane. Oh, they noticed you, brother. They knew exactly where they where you were. You got to know where Zayat is, man. He is just so capable of finding heroes at their weakest point and being able to exploit them to full effect. Even just the last hits uh, underneath the, the towers have been super effective so far from Secret. The areas where they can look to play the map out is shrinking. Stinger on the bottom side. Doesn't feel like he's going to be able to do much to be able to stall this one out much longer. Oh, look at this. On to Whisper they go. Resolution nearby to provide all the damage they need to kill off the Lycan. And now the rest of Beakers. They tried to find an angle in, but they weren't able to do so easy cleanup of the summons they'll also keep puppy alive as well to make sure he doesn't go down the like in bulls and helm dumb so a lot of gold given over six thousand net worth lead the 12 minute mark this is uh yeah this is getting very very out of hand you have to wonder how much sting has played the enigma as well like he's a fantastic player but a lot of his idol on micro just hasn't been on point it, just giving up so much gold both in the lane as well as even in just that fight you know he allowed rezo to AOE them down with zero movement coming out from them. They weren't even right-clicking anyone. Mm. So it is just providing a lot more of this snowball effect. Gold graph would probably be at about, I would say, even 6,000 instead of the 7 if it was uh, just a little bit different on that micro front. Yeah, really... Have one... level 6, though. I might be able to catch out Whisper. I don't think a tier 2 tower is going to stop secret. And the onslaught that will pursue on f have the damage at the moment. And now Beast Ghost, they might be able to get on top of Puppy. First kill for them in quite some time. Now with the black hole as well. Clips oh, on the two. Oh no, the damage on Niche should come through thanks to the nether strike. He's die. They'll finally get the kill, but the turnaround is a secret. Bring all five members to take the skirmish inside Beast Coast's jungle and well, finally, they started the fight under the T2 tower, and it looks like they're going to end it behind there as well, as K1 wants to clean up, but he might just be walking to his own grave. The AoE damage from Resolution not coming out because he's lacking the mana at the moment, but as soon as the Shadow Dance expires, they'll be able to chase down the Slark, and no high ground will protect him. Even the Yule Scepter. They're going to try and catch out Rezo on the retreat here. Stinger getting the stun off. He wants to try and give it over to Gajira, I would imagine. The deny? Oh yes, my God. Rezo. 
Oh, oh. what a player. What a player. And he's out of tips. It's the saddest moment in existence. That's where you have to ask for a teammate to tip. Mm -hmm. like, come on. Brother has to help you out. Yeah. Oof. Things looking good for Secret. Keeping the momentum going. Pretty that solid black hole as well. Connecting it onto two. Made sure to prioritize it after Puppy was already dead. Even we're able to take out Nisha. But still, the fight going in Secret's favor after all of that. He's K1. Got that Midas off before the uh, the fight truly began. He's just here rotating in from the backside. But wasn't able to truly make that big impact. This is the effect of that AoE damage that the Leshrac's able to provide. Heights as well, always on point, being able to land those stuns, those rolls through, and yeah, big smiles coming out from Rezo. Don't blame you with, with how this game's looking at the moment. Put up our first 2 0 in Group B. In secret. I know the black hole is used, I know the shape shift was used as well, so it looks like Roche easy for them to be able to claim, and this should really start to open up the map for them to play a little bit more objective based to get rid of some of the towers. For now, Secret are going to be disciplined. They're going to make sure to address their own uh, side of the map. Of course, Rezo feels like he is almost invincible now, playing underneath his tower. Plenty of mana to play with. Yule Scepter, and getting closer and closer towards that Bloodstone. Only about uh, 1,200 gold away, which is pretty healthy timing, considering the farm he's already got. All right. Well, it, it looks like... For Beast Coast, it's going to be up to this Aghanim Scepter on Whisper. He's going Helm of the Overlord still, but... All that thought is... So they're actually going to look to take a fighter to the Age's advantage. Zayat's going to be able to get the roll away. They want to deal with the squishy support in Poppy and said, What a jump in! Chrysalis onto three with a stun. And now they just need a split away. His disaster is soon to occur if they stick around for a fight. Down to the south, they've been able to blow up C Smile. They'll turn to Singer as well. And Chrysalis, he wants to end the fight on to Whisper. The Bastions are primed and ready to go. But they'll use the Yules instead to be able to cancel the TP. A 4-1 four, four trade that favors Secret in the end. And they've still got the lane in a really healthy spot for mid as well. Rezo, now with the Diabolic Edict maxed out, they're just going to use Nisha to pop away at the mid tower. Still didn't expend the Aegis has so many useful tools at his disposal. He even look to go for the uh, the Aghanim Shard as his next item, just to provide that little bit of extra utility, that gap flows away from some of these heroes that are consistently running at him. And they're hunting K1. They don't want to give him any time on this map to be able to get back into this game. Crystalis, ready for the jump. Ready for the jump. And Rezo ready for the follow-up as well, K1. Your ultimate can only hold them back so much. He's out of men on Poppy. Down to the south as well, ready to be able to follow up if required. It's going to have to be up to some shenanigans to make it out of this one, and that's not the case. So Beast Coast, they are looking to smoke. A lot of heroes showing up top. It's only Zayats along with Nisha at the moment, but if you don't get on top of the sniper, we see how much damage that Nisha can do. Brings down the Enigma with it. He's even going to kick back the Spirit Breaker closer towards the sniper. So an attempt going begging for Beast Coast. I mean, as soon as you see Secret across the map, you felt like you could make the play with the numbers advantage, but not to be Secret are way too far ahead. Yeah, way too far ahead and way too fast with how they're playing. I think that's the biggest improvement that I've seen uh, from Secret ever since they've had this newer roster with uh, with Resolution and Zayats playing. It just feels like the connection is there between the position what? two and the position four, realizing what he wants at different stages of the game and being able to adapt to it as well. Even get another dive through. Eight deaths smile. for C-Smile. Wow. And now they're even looking for more kills as well. Whisper has to TP out, but unfortunately, Gojira would not be as fortunate. A cut off the path, and they might even go for K1 as well. Crystals. I'm able to get the vision though onto the Slark. We'll be able to like scurry on. Oh, it's dead. They're going to go for the Lycan under the tier three tower. Nisha's is off to the right side, an easy kill for them to find. It might cost Zayat his life. Well, all right, well, he'll also make it out as well. A roll to the right side, K1 almost going down to Nisha's right click damage. Yeah, they're just dealing with all these 
all these summons right now. They've got the tools to be able to do it. It's all on the back of Rezo, considering the issues for the single target. I think it's fantastic about how they've been prioritizing Rezo and his survivability in a lot of these fights. That's when Crystalis is jumping in, when it's enabling Rezo just to continuously deal damage in a lot of these. Of course, the, uh, the BKB, not the highest value this time around for Rezo, so he's going to be emphasizing that Blink Dagger again, just ensuring that he's able to follow up on any kind of initiation coming through. From, uh, uh oh! Uh oh! <laughs> Look at the damage! Oh man. yes! Nisha just cleans up K1. Oh, this might be the ninth death of the game here for C Smile. Had a really good start to game one, but this is a different showing with the instant cancel of the black hole. This should probably be GG, and that's going to be dropped. And finally, we've got a 2-0 in Group B. It's going to be secret. Very convincing here in this second game, being able to topple the South American boys in Beast Coast. And all of us 15 to 19 and 59 second betters for shortest game in the tournament. We're on the board. We're going to be able to get through. And uh, it was it was super convincing coming through from Secret, right? They ran the exact same draft. I thought it was clever. Some of the picks that they looked to put together on Beast Coast, but... That offlane in particular just really did not work out. The sniper consisted pressure coming through. Uh, sorry, the, the slaughter consisted pressure coming through, not the sniper. And it was just really solid performance. You know, anytime melee...